This is the chamber. Once someone enters, there is no turning back. You have got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. Is this supposed to be entertaining? Why would I even want to watch this? Well, I honestly don't know. Hey everyone, I'm Ben Schneider. And at the very end of my first Greed video, I briefly joked about the January 2002 Fox game show, The Chamber. And about a month after the video was published, I actually got a comment asking me to make a video on the show. It was already on my list of potential video ideas, but now I guess I kind of have to talk about it. So today, join me for a look back at the worst game show ever. And no, I'm not exaggerating. Before we talk about The Chamber, it's worth going back and revisiting Greed. I've already talked about Greed at length on this channel, but I haven't really touched on why it was cancelled. Looking back, with Millionaire transitioning from primetime to daytime syndication in 2002, Greed probably would have only lasted about another year or so had Fox given it a second season. But the main reason that the show ended in July of 2000 was because the new head of Fox's programming, Gail Berman, was much more focused on scripted television and wanted the network to emphasize such programs in their lineup. Which meant even though Greed was a good show with decent ratings, it got cancelled. Now, this might be forgivable. Except just 18 months later, Fox tried another game show. You dumb son of a- The fact that said game show wasn't a revival of Greed is already enough to make me a bit annoyed. But the fact that said game show was The Chamber is enough to make me downright angry. Hello, I'm Rick Schwartz. You are about to witness television history. You know, I'm just gonna come out and say it. The Chamber is the worst game show in the history of television. I would take a hundred episodes of Love Triangle, a thousand episodes of Chuck Woolery Naturally Stoned, and a million episodes of Carney Wilson Unwatch- I mean, Unstapled over a single minute more of The Chamber. And believe me, it was torture just to watch the damn show. And I would know since I sat through all three episodes of this before making this video. Yep, that's right. This show lasted a grand total of three episodes. Six were supposedly taped, but by the time the third episode aired, Fox had already pulled it off the air. This makes Greed look like a long-running classic by comparison. Fox admittedly rushed Greed's production in an effort to launch a competing show with Millionaire. And in a similar manner, The Chamber's origins can be traced back to ABC's The Chair, which was a basic trivia game that tested contestants' general knowledge while also trying to keep their heart rate down as surprises were thrown their way on occasion. The show was still safe, though. It might have given people a jump scare here and there, but it was by no means dangerous. Fox saw this and decided to launch a competing game show in the chamber. Except this show was actually so dangerous, it could have killed its contestants. And those aren't my original words. Looking back on this show, it's mind-boggling how it was even allowed to exist. The show begins with an unnamed voiceover guy hyping up the chamber by saying human endurance will be taken to its very limits, as contestants deal with unbearable heat, cold, and hurricane force winds. Should they last through all seven levels of the chamber, they could walk away with over $100,000. The host is television producer Rick Schwartz, though host might be an exaggeration, since in the first two episodes, he wasn't even the one asking the rapid-fire trivia questions while the contestant was in the chamber. So his purpose here is... what exactly? We don't know either. Two contestants are introduced to the audience going head-to-head -to, -head to see which of the two will have the opportunity to enter the chamber. The host asks a question with a limited number of correct answers, such as name the 12 signs of the zodiac. The two contestants alternate giving answers until one of them gives an incorrect answer. If the other contestant can follow up with another correct answer, they score a point, and the first to two points wins the match and enters the chamber. The contestant's goal is to answer as many questions as possible while enduring the torture of a chamber. The chamber shuts down if a contestant answers two consecutive questions incorrectly, exceeds their stress quotient for more than 20 seconds, is deemed unfit to continue by the show's medical staff, or voluntarily says, stop the chamber. 
Now let's talk about the chamber itself. The chamber is so dangerous that the contestant has to sign a waiver on camera before going in. Really? Look, I, I know standards and practices are important, but you couldn't have just done that before the show? You're just wasting time here. In the first episode, the first contestant goes up against the hot chamber. Temperatures start at 110 degrees Fahrenheit and progressively increase to 150 degrees as the game goes on. The contestant also has to deal with muscle contractors, simulated earthquakes, massive wind gusts, decreasing oxygen levels, and if that weren't enough, the chair the contestant is strapped into starts to rotate. Remember how I said Rick Schwartz isn't even the one asking the questions? Well, it's not like he goes away entirely while the contestant is in the chamber. In between each level, Rick continues to waste time by talking to the contestant for a good 10 to 15 seconds. Chamber, level 3, to commence in 10 seconds. How you doing, Chuck? It's the upside-down stuff is interesting. It really distracts you. Chuck, don't miss the next question or the chamber will terminate. You got it. Okay, I'm right. pulling for you. Let's go. Which means 10 to 15 seconds of additional torture in the chamber. Seriously now, why is Rick even here? Why are some of the questions multiple choice, but others up to the contestant to come up with by themselves? Chuck, you have won yourself $7,000. You answered 14 questions correctly. So we made it to level 5, answered 14 questions correctly, while being subjected to all of that, and all he gets is $7,000? 14 questions on Millionaire got you half a million, and all you get for the same amount of questions on this show, with all the torture and everything, is seven grand? The second contestant was placed into the cold chamber. This chamber starts at 30 degrees Fahrenheit and decreases to around negative 20 degrees. The contestant is still forced to deal with the same muscle contractors, decreasing oxygen levels, and wind gusts, but instead of rotating, they now have to deal with water jets. And that's the whole show. The process is repeated a few times to fill the hour-long time slot. Christina, I'm concerned. Christina, I'm getting concerned about you. Tell me what's going on in there. Uh, my legs burn really bad, but I'm gonna stay in. You really want to stay in? I do. Oh, the things people in this country will do to make a quick buck. In 1998, what American astronaut went into space at age 76? Oh, crap, I know this. Incorrect. The answer, of course, John Glenn, which you did phenomenally well. What happened in there? I thought that I answered Glenn twice, and when nothing came back, I just said something else. I thought I was waiting to hear correct or incorrect. I'm with the contestant here. Normally, the last name is good enough for a correct response on shows like Jeopardy. But here, apparently you need the full name. Well, that's great. Not only does the entire concept of the show objectively suck, they're also too strict in their rules when it comes to answering the questions. Dick Clark was an executive producer on this? Somebody please tell me how the show made it to broadcast primetime television. I have to know. Now there is one silver lining here. One of the show's last contestants, Scott Brown, actually somehow, some way, managed to last all seven levels of a cold chamber and won $20,000. However, after the show, he was hospitalized. Brown then proceeded to sue the network for $100,000, and won. So at least something good came of this show, I guess. Fox would also go on to be sued by ABC, as the chair's creator believed the chamber was too similar of a show. Yep, that's right. Fox was sued by a former contestant and its rival network over the chamber. That's actually kind of impressive, and I'd give Fox credit for doing something that impressive, if the show didn't put the lives of its contestants in legitimate danger. You know, I think the folks at Game Show Garbage summed it up perfectly. And that's pretty much the chamber. They just repeated this entire f process for the hour. Six episodes of this show were made, yet only three aired. They also hyped other chambers such as an electric shock chamber, hurricane chamber and probably more repugnant than the show itself, an insect chamber with flies and bees and all other creepy crawlies. You know what? I've had enough. I f hate this show. I f hate the premise. I f hate Rick Schwartz as host. I f hate the guys that this could actually be an entertaining show. I f hate the fact that this actually got past the FCC as it was pretty much the closest thing to a live execution. 
I f hate 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 this show. Ah. And they're not joking. The show's producers seriously hinted at alternative chambers like that. The shuffle format on Millionaire was more tolerable than the chamber. I would rather sit through all one million seconds of the million second quiz uninterrupted. I'd rather play the Press Your Luck DVD game every day for the rest of my life. I'd rather rewatch the game show version of Candy Crush. I'd rather there be a 24 hour Pluto TV channel for Think Like a Cat. I'd rather see a revival of Who Wants to Be Governor of California, The Debating Game. I would rather see GSN acquire Dancing with the Stars again. I'd rather see all three seasons of Skin Wars released on DVD. I'd rather listen to Chuck Woolery and Wink Martindale's diss track. Sleeky, freaky, cheeky, yo, back in two and two. A game show legends in 73. I'd rather see Carney Wilson win the Daytime Emmy Award for Outstanding Game Show Host then rewatch a single second of the chamber. It is unequivocally, undeniably, undisputedly, undebatably, is that even a word? Who cares? You get the point. The worst game show of all time. Ever. Thanks for watching. Jennifer, would you recommend the chamber?